Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Let Me Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Um I'm still waiting on the new app that I paid for. It cost me £100 to get this thing and it's still not ready. I did this on Thursday and it's now Monday night, which is a bit annoying, but it's not annoying. I'm not kind of, I'm not shaking my fists in anger. But uh, it's going to be for the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast. And it's going to be for the Android. So um, anyone that's got an Android phone or uh, Android app will be able to download it. So, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, uh, waiting for it to be ready. Uh, another thing I've been doing, um, I've been working on my websites, but I had this thing where I get a little bit, I think what it is, is I've got the opposite to, the opposite to not focusing. I really focus, like really proper. If I'm doing something, I really focus on it. And I can spend ages doing the same thing. Quite thorough, quite thorough. We say thorough in here, but thorough is, uh, some people say. And, and... I get a little bit too focused on the websites and then I kind of forget about making the recordings which is by far the most important thing to be doing so I need uh, I don't know how but I need to find a balance where I'm doing both because the websites are never finished and of course the podcasts and the new recordings will never be completed either because constantly need to make new stuff so yeah that's the situation so I've got what have I got six websites I've got the jasonnewland.com all my stuff's on there that's all built everything's on there every single episode that's available pretty much is on there uh, you can stream, download, um, it's all organised, um, categorised or whatever you want to call it. I've also got deepsleepwhisper.com, which is a Deep Sleep Whisper hypnosis podcast. I've got this one, letmeboydesleep.com. I've also got a neighbour that likes to cough really loudly. I've got sleep whisper hip. I've got what's it? Whisper hip. Uh, no, sleephypnosisweekly.com. And oh, someone's proper sneezing outside. Um, well, that'd be sniffy. And then I got so that's for the sleep hypnosis weekly podcast. Uh, what other one I've got the free sleep hypnosis podcast which has all of my hypnosis uh, sleep stuff including the these ones as well so there's like 400 recordings on there all the different courses I've done uh, and the ongoing ones the completed ones plus the long sleep sessions and then there's the free 
hypnosismp3s.com and that's another website that's got everything on it or will have when I've completed it so every time I make a new recording I've got to do all the website stuff and put it on there so it's uh, it's a bit of a juggling act anyway today I'm going to di- not, not going to donate I'm going to donate uh, my kidneys um, I'm going to um, dedicate this recording to Rihanna Greer. Not for any other reason other than she's well fit. No, no, not for any other reason. Just um, I like to sort of say hello to different people sometimes in the recording. So this is for Rihanna. So I don't know if I've said the word, the, the name right, because I've never spoken to her. Um, and people do, they do pronounce the names differently. I'll give you an example. When I was in London, I had a job in a call center. It wasn't really a call center because no one called in. It was a sales center where I called out and I used to sell people mobile phone contracts and it's these were the it's kind of the early not really the early days of mobile phones or cell phones or mobile 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 phones. Mobile. That sounds that sounds a bit wobbly, doesn't it? Oh, my head's a bit mobbly today. A little mobble. I think... I mean, contracts were around before 2001. But it's suddenly, that I think, it became a lot more popular uh, to give free phones away to people if they took a contract and I had a a job doing that and I was actually forced to take the job by the unemployment office because I'd been off work ill I'd I'd been I was on unemployment for for illness uh, and um they decided that they, I, I, I had to go back to work. And it wasn't a case of they reduced my money and said that I had to go in to sign on instead of just... Because at the time I didn't have to sign on, just used to get my money every two weeks. And they decided, this is in 2001, they decided, no... No, you have to come in. You have to prove that you are looking for work. And I, and there was this young, young lad in there who was, well, I was fairly young, really. I was 30, but he was probably 24, maybe 23, 22. But he was short, short. He was really friendly, but he had this really high voice. Is kind of what you'd expect. You know when you're a kid and you you hear about eunuchs and you imagine if someone was a eunuch, they'd have a really high voice. But it's, it's kind of not true, really, I don't think. It might be true if the eunuch becomes eunuch before... Um, so I don't know if eunuchism is because puberty still happens anyway, doesn't it? So I don't know. I'm not sure about the. Uh, maybe I need to go and maybe this is a time to pause and Google eunuchism, eunuchism, un, eunuch, because eunuch, yeah, eunuchs. So I had this job in a shop. Uh, 
not in shop, in a in a call centre. But it wasn't a call centre. But it was because I called out, but not in. Well, why would I call in? But I got this job, and the reason is because a company called Reed, which is a, an employment place, they got a contract with uh, the government which was Labour government at that time. And this was, I think this is probably what Blair did uh, in between, you know, bombing countries. He kind of thought, oh, why not I'll do? I'll, I'll uh, get Reed, Reed to come along. And it wasn't actually a name, it wasn't a person, although it might have been named after a person, I don't know. It's hard to know, isn't it? I mean, it's probably something to Google. I don't, I don't know, I really. And then, 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 I, uh, I went into the job centre, like normal. You know, I was going to go in there, sign on, and then head off to my uh, cash in hand job. <laughs> joking, I'm joking. I'd. Uh, I went in because I was called in because I had an interview uh, with the unemployment people. They do that occasionally. If you're unemployed, they'll give you an interview and you have to go in and explain yourself to them. And this, it might have been a man, it might have been a woman. I don't recall uh exactly what happened. I don't even know what day it was. But I was told that I must attend a course, a back to work course. And I thought, oh but you know I thought, okay, fair enough. I went there and it was actually this whole building was set out with reed like they did basically rented this whole big building out and it was big and you go in there and I'd have to go in there every day and apply for jobs but they would like really kind of push and say we're going to send you for this interview we're going to send you for this, we're going to... I thought it was just going to be like a week course. It was permanent. It was basically, I had to go there until they got me a job. Well, oh, well, well, well. I said, mm. I just thought the whole idea was like, ah. Oh. It's quite a good idea, really, for other people. But what about my lions in the morning? And I like to eat chocolate in the afternoon. I've got me me little afternoon nap as well. And uh, I was younger, so I had also did a few other things. But then I said. Well, I didn't. I said I had to do it, so I just went. And I had a little moan on the way home. And the well, I said I wasn't to myself. It was to my little pet tortoise that I used to carry around everywhere in a Tesco carrier bag. And I said, by the way, if you ever get a turtle or a tortoise, make sure you know the difference between a turtle and a tortoise. Because when you actually put them into the the cage or the the tank, it's good to know the difference whether it needs water or not. Obviously, putting water into a cage is like an endless job. It goes everywhere. And one day I was in there, and I remember I remember this one because it was 
again, it might be the man, it might be the woman, didn't look. But there is this board of things, like jobs and stuff. And some of them look quite interesting. Because after a while, it got so boring having to go there, I kind of would prefer to work than go in there every day. So I said, hmm, I'll, I'll just, what, what's, you know, what's available? And at one point I got quite excited because there was a job available to build computers. Now that interested me because uh, during 2000 onwards I was proper into computers, building websites, I was obsessed with it. So the idea of actually building a computer, learning everything about that, that sounded like a dream job. And I don't think it was like in some massive uh, factory. I think it might have been like computer repairs or, some, or something like that. But they phoned up and that job had gone. It's like, oh. And they said, we're going to send you for a different one. I said, what? Well, I said, uh, it's a... Uh, sales job selling mobile phones that's what they told me I said oh I don't fancy that they said you've got no choice uh, I said okay it sounds great then so I went along and they gave me the job honestly I think I could have walked in with a fresh dog poo balancing on my head and they still would have given me the job you know they I was getting I mean, it wasn't just commission so I did get paid a salary a very low salary it was like 10 grand a year or something plus commission and it was my first sales job but I always wanted to be a I always wanted to do sales, but not that type of sales, really. Um, but I kind of had no choice to just to do it, so I did it. And it was in Romford. And the it was quite funny because the the young lady, oh, it was a lady I was dealing with. Yeah, that's it. She was very forceful, very kind of go get, go get her, and she kind of forced me to to go for the interview and and forced me to you know, but it really just f kept like following me around. It's like you know, just like I'm trying to go to the toilet, leave me alone. Yeah, but we've got this job, we've got this job. Uh, uh, remember what you got to do in the interview. Remember, you've got to smile. You got to smile. Uh, Don't take your stun gun. Okay, I'll leave it at home this time. Anyway, she took me to the... She took me to the train station, which was just up the road, actually. It was about f five minute walk. And she bought me a travel card for the first month so that I could get to work. They had everything covered. Seriously, everything covered, including, um, I think, five hundred pound. If I if I still work in him after a month or whatever, I get five hundred pound bonus. Just weird. Yeah, the whole setup was really was quite very really clever the way they did it. Anyway, I had this job. The reason I mention this is because there was a a girl there called 
Sean. S I A S I A N Sean. The reason I remember her is because she was the top seller. And she basically it did whatever she wanted to do. She would sit there at a table, she had makeup, she would put makeup on, she'd be eating, drinking, not alcohol, but just, you know, basically, she just, she made the desk her own, and she did, she'd literally be talking to other people at the same time as talking to the customers, and she got the most sales out of anybody. So the management left her alone. So her name was Sean. And then my next sales job was with Churchill. Again, phone calls, this time phone calls coming in. And I sold car insurance. And I met someone there with the same name. But I'd only seen it on PayPal. So S-I-A-N. And she was one of the top salespeople. So when I did meet her, and I said, oh, hi, uh, so you're, I knew what team she was in, and so I kind of found out, I think she was like the only female in her team. So therefore I knew what her name was, if that makes sense. So I said, oh, you see, you're, you're Sean. And she said, my name is not Sean, it's Sian. Oh. Wow, so I just like, oh, okay. So, you know, I got used to this name being a certain way. I'll be honest, I've not really heard that name before. Never heard Sian before, but I'm not sure if I've ever heard Sean before either. So that's why I'm saying that it's Rihanna, it could be Rihanna. Rihanna? 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 No, Ri. Ri Ri. Be Riri, so I don't know. It's uh, I think um, Rihanna is from Scotland, I think, from the Facebook thing. And I had a friend from Scotland in my class well, not my class, my my year. So I kind of knew him for quite a few years. He's one of my best friends. He's called Neil. And he... It was quite weird because... Well, not weird, but he had a really, really strong Scottish accent. I think he was from... Not Berlin. That'd be a different country, isn't it? No, not Nigeria. Um, Glasgow, I think. I think it was Glasgow. And, uh, or Glasgow. Glasgow. And he had a really, really strong accent. But I got to understand most of the words that he was saying after a while. The first time I went round his house couldn't believe it because his dad answered the door and his dad was like really quite posh kind of in to me he sounded English but he might yeah I'm pretty sure he was English but he might have been kind of Edinburgh but he was really like sounded English to me but then I met his mum and his mum had a really strong accent. And I just found it strange that he 
he chose to speak like his mum rather than his dad when he was living around I thought he would have kind of more gone towards speaking more like his dad when he's around so many other people that were speaking that way but I think he was a little bit of a rebel and he was he was very proud of Scott being Scottish so I think he yeah that might have been what it is but he um, we went me and him see I got a little memory of him because I got a tattoo on my arm and I got that tattoo when I was with Neil and we went to basically we were just I think we was on the bus going to the next town I don't know why we were on the bus we, well I know why we got on the bus that's why we were on the bus and we clearly decided to go somewhere so that's where we went and decided to go by bus hence being on the bus and I saw someone that I knew but he was my brother's friend my eldest brother's friend uh, eldest bro- older older brother he's four years older than me so there's not a lot in it really but not when you get to be 70 like I am now and he was saying oh, I said, said oh, you're right then Bob that might not be his name he said yeah thanks Stewie I said no that's not my name I think he probably said mate you're right, mate. I said, yeah, you're right, mate. Because I was going through a phase where I kept saying, you know what I mean? After, like, every every word, you know what I mean? It's like that, you know what I mean? It's cold, you know what I mean? I was walking, you know what I mean, down the street, you know what I mean? And uh, I tripped over, you know what I mean? I wasn't sure why, you know what I mean? And... I don't know why I was doing that. I just I went through a little phase of doing it, of of talking and saying, you know what I mean. And I realised that some people, they it was just filling in gaps of words, gaps where I perhaps didn't have anything to say. Yeah, oh, didn't stop me talking, as you can hear. Not having it. Not having anything to say doesn't stop me talking. But some people do that with swear words, don't they? They'll like just fill in the gaps with swearing. And the swearing doesn't actually make any sense because they're not angry. They haven't stubbed their toe on letterbox. You know, they're not, not like, oh, and they're like, oh, blimmin' heck. And other such swear words. And. Uh, yeah so we're on the bus. I don't know what I was talking about there. And. Uh, he said. Oh, what were you, what you two lads up to then? Hey, What are you two up, up to? And. Um. Uh, I said, well, you know what I mean, just getting on a bus, you know what I mean, I uh, don't know what I'm doing really, you know what I mean, we just thought we'd uh, go into town, you know what I mean, and he, he said, please stop that, I said, stop what, you know what I mean, he said, just stop saying, you know what I mean, you want me to stop saying, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, I said, yes, he said, yes, someone said, yes. And but I'll I'll, lo- I'll leave that I'll leave move that away because it's annoying me. And uh, she, she, he, he, he'd had a sex change, and now it's a lady. And she said, um, "Well, I'm going to have a tattoo done." And I said, "Yeah, but I didn't ask you what you were up to." And he said, yeah, but 
I asked you what you were up to, so I figured you'd want to know what I'm up to. I said, look, no offence, but I'm never interested in what anybody's ever up to. And he said, that's a bit rude. I said, it's not though, it's not rude, it's just honest. I have a very, (laughs) occasionally, I'm interested in somebody and I show an interest and I am interested in what they're doing. Um, You could probably call that love. It's probably a love thing. Um, But generally, I'm not that interested. Oh. You know, it's, it's basically sometimes I meet somebody and I like them. I don't know why I like them. And I'm interested in what they're doing. And I, I show an interest and I care. But I don't have that general care into, like, an interest rather to what people are doing. It's, uh, just don't have that naturally inbuilt in me for some reason. And he said, well, it's, it's a quite a, quite a deep conversation to be having on a bus. And I said, yeah, well, what better place? He said, I don't know, a counselling session? I said, that's that's funny. That's a good, good one. He said, thanks. I said, it's okay. I said, he said, yeah, I do try. I mean, I'm, I try and chuck in a few little jokes along the way. I said, I know, I appreciate it. He said, yeah, thanks. He said, anyway, can I just tell you about what I'm going to do? I said, yeah, go on then, might as well. He said, well, yeah, I mean, it makes the story mildly more interesting if if I get to talk to you and tell you what I'm doing. Otherwise, it's just me and you talking about not talking about what I'm doing. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. He said, well, guess what I'm doing, lads? So I pretend to be excited. I said, what are you doing then? Please tell me. I can't wait to hear this. You know what I mean? And he said, I'm going to have my tattoo. I'm going to have a tattoo done. And my friend Neil said to me, ooh, that's a good idea. I said, oh, what, what? I said, well, I said, what is? And Neil said, what do you mean, what is? I said, what, what, what? He said, where, where are you being? We're talking about tattoos. I said that, he said he's going to go and have a tattoo. I say that's a good idea. And you say, what is? So what do you think I'm talking about when I say that's a good idea? What, what digging for oil? What, 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 what do you think? Let's join the Navy? No, no, I, I just, I wasn't listening. I was busy, I was, I was looking down there and I just uh, saw someone that I actually might be interested in talking to. That's a bit rude. I know, everyone's saying I'm rude today for some reason. Perhaps it's because you are. Oh, okay. And I said, well, yeah, let's go and get some tattoos done. Now, I didn't actually believe, I didn't mean what I was saying. I got no interest in getting a tattoo uh, at that time, wasn't interested never really have been interested in tattoos um, for myself I just especially after having that one done because it was painful just yeah it's just we've all got interests I like to make hypnosis audios and I suppose I'm quite interested in philosophy and psychology and psychotherapy and uh, do like watching telly other things that end with E ography <laughs> um, so yeah I 
I said, yeah, come on then. So we got off the bus. I got off the bus and um, they called me back on saying, it's not this stop. I said, okay. The bus driver said, no, you've got off now. You've got to pay to get back on. I said, come on, mate. You know what I mean? I, got, I just got off. And what are you going to, you know? He said, what? I said, it's, I, I just got off the bus. You know, you want to do that to me? Well, what, what's going on? And the bus driver said to me, listen, son, if you can actually put a comprehensible sentence together, I will let you back on the bus. No charge. I said, please can I get on the back on the bus, sir? And he said, okay. And uh, when we got to the destination, because I decided just to stay on, after the third time of getting off the wrong time, the wrong stop, I said I'd stay on and wait for them to get off and I just followed them around but I don't like following people I like it's not that I want to be the leader of the gang and I've not wanted to be the leader of the gang since the about what 1999 or 98 whatever year it was but I don't want to I don't want to boss people around or I don't want to lead but I don't want to be led either. I want to kind of do what I want to do. And you can't really do what you want to do if you're in a group and everyone's saying, let's go and let's go to the park and drink cider. You know, I'm obviously not not now, but you know, back in when I was younger. Oh, but I don't want to go to the park I don't want to go drink cider at the park I want to go down to the beach and eat mushy peas no one ever wanted to do that so we went to this tattoo place and my brother's friend the the older lad he had his tattoo and if I remember correctly he was upstairs having it done Andre's just woken up I texted Rihanna not texted Facebook messaged and said she said how's Andre I said he's asleep now but I bet you'll wake up when I start making a recording if you can hear him in the background, that's what he's just done. Andre. I've got him in my arms now. You know what I did the other day? I leant back in my black chair, this big black squeaky chair, and I just leant back in it and I was listening to... I listened to this recording, not this recording, obviously, because it's not been... How can I listen to this every day? It's not even been finished. But there's a recording that I listen to every day. And it's uh, kind of a motivational thing, but it's... It's by a man called Earl Nightingale. And it's absolutely brilliant. So I got it on my laptop and I just play it uh, for half an hour. It's, I think it lasts for 32 minutes. And I laid back in my chair. This was two days ago. And I laid back. And the chair collapsed. But backwards. So it literally head first went upside down and my head smashed against the wall I mean quite hard I had a headache the wall wasn't too happy either and 
the whole of my weight was basically pressing on my neck and I was trapped. I suppose you could say well, it's been a, that's a little bit, you know, exaggerationally saying you're trapped. Yeah, but I still am, I'm still here. I can't get out. No, I did get out eventually, but it took me about f five to 10 minutes before I could get out. And all I had was my underpants on because it's fairly warm at the moment and there's no one else around. Uh, I don't sit in my underpants when I've got visitors. And I couldn't reach my phone to phone for help. And I don't know, fire brigade or I don't know, or like my friend downstairs to come and help. I just needed someone to pull the chair out to, to help, but also to help me get up so that, because I've, I was a little bit worried about my neck, if I'm honest. Because, well, I just, you know, I was. But there was no way to manoeuvre to move myself either side to get out. So I was kind of stuck between this chair and the wall. And I thought perhaps I should yell and shout and maybe someone will come and help you know, one of, the, one of the neighbours or something. And then I remembered that I've got like that five locks on my front door, so no one would be able to get in. You know, it would, you'd need a... It'd take a long time to get through that door. It was like, oh... Then I thought, well, I've got a... Uh, the wind is open. Hello, Andre. Andre, you're the most beautiful little girl in the world. <laughs> um, he's laying on my lap now. He's just... He's been quite calm, actually. He's kind of half, a, half asleep, half awake. But he's not doing anything. He's just he's licking my hand. But yeah, so eventually I thought it's the window's open, perhaps if I call. But then someone had to come up in the ladder, on a ladder, and open the window, you know, get through the window. Now, I've got neighbours that are slim, so they probably would be able to get through that window. I wouldn't. If I tried to get through the window, the whole thing would break, guaranteed. Um, because I'm not... I'm not skinny, I'm not. You could say I'm possibly not slim either. But I do have a new sit-up bench that I bought. And it's uh, quite high. I don't know what the right... It's, it's basically it's, it's a sit up bench so I you know, sit in it supports my legs and then I just do sit ups so I've got that and I've not been able to use it the last couple of days because of my neck because my neck's been painful and I've I had a headache and everything on my neck and I thought with doing the sit ups it's putting strain on, on my neck so I thought, oh, I'll have a little, I'll have a little rest from that. And you know what? When I when I thought to myself, I'm not going to do any sit ups today. Not one part of my brain disagreed with me. Not one atom in my being thought, no, no, I really should do those sit ups. I was in total agreement. Every part of me was in total agreement not to do any sit-ups. That's quite an amazing thing, really. It's quite a beautiful thing. 
So, my friend, Neil, whenever I hear the word Neil, I always think of Superman 2, where Zod, he says to, he says to Superman, Superman, Neil before Zod. And Superman does. And, uh, and he crushes his hand. Something like that, yeah, I remember that. But my friend, Neil, had a tattoo of Scotland. I think it was the Scottish flag. But I think he might have also had Scotland written underneath. And he had that on his shoulder. I, and we were both too young to have tattoos. We were 16. We weren't allowed to have tattoos till you were 18. But for some reason, this person didn't seem to be bothered. And I had a tattoo on my forearm of a dragon's head. It's basically a... Do you know the Chinese festivals where they have these big dragons and, you know, there's like a hundred... Like a, it looks more like it's got like a centipede because of the amount of legs, human legs underneath holding the really long body and they move it from side to side and stuff like that. Well... That's supposed to be the head of a dragon. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit faded because I imagine when I was 16, that was quite bright. But it's because it's a, it's a while ago. It's a bit faded. And. Yeah. You know what I mean. So that was it. That's, uh, that's the whole story really. Actually no. I think what we did then. We. I went. Because I was. No, that is the story. That's the whole story. Nothing but the story. And in later years, because we used to hang around, I had I had probably two friends that I was that I used to spend quite a bit of time with outside of school, but I also had friends in school as well. Um, but there was Dean and Neil. And I kind of had different relationships with both of them. Dean was someone I just hung around with from the age of nine, probably, until I left school. Although the last year of school, I didn't, I seemed to kind of Drift, we drifted away from each other. And I don't really know why. It might have just been puberty. <laughs> it sounds a bit weird, but it's just there's yeah, just there's different. Um, there's a lot of kind of different. You get pulled from place to place. I think when you're kind of like 15 and there's girls are way more important than friends to the boys and probably it might be the same for for the girls. Boys are more important than their friends. Just because it's all a big, exciting pool of poo. I suppose, you know, it's kind of just, you know what I mean? It's a big whirlpool of 
uh, possibilities and and the only thing I was really interested in when I was at that age was doing karate so I was obsessed with martial arts and so me and Neil we used to because I had I had lots of different weapons and stuff like martial arts weapons uh, like nunchucks tonfers didn't have a sword but I did buy a sword when I got my first wages my, f my very first week's wages when I started working I got paid £60 and I went out and bought a sword a samurai sword the first thing because it was something I always wanted not always you know, I don't think there's any point when I was three years old just thinking I want a sword I didn't want a bike I wanted a sword but you know when I was that age I wanted a sword oh yeah and it just smelt and felt and all oh, this lovely just everything about it was beautiful I mean the handle alone was just oh but uh I used to have these throwing stars so I used to me and Neil we used to have this big box at uh, it wasn't at the end of the garden but it was probably leaning up against the tree and me and Neil we just, I don't know how many throwing stars I had I had a few different ones and we'd throw the throwing stars at this box and uh My family seemed quite okay with it for some reason. But yeah, it's. And I think, what other thing? I kind of had my little periods with him where we'd. I think Dean was so nice. And, uh, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, he was just a lovely person and. Uh, our commonality really was when I met him he was living in foster care or he was living in he was living in a children's home uh, Bernardo's and I had lived in a children's home previous for a few years up to the age of seven so I kind of related to him in that way and we both knew what it was like to live in that situation it's, it's, a, it's a different it's a different experience to uh, to people that haven't lived like you know it's, it's just an experience so we, I suppose I kind of related to him and I used to visit him because that's where he lived and I visit him there and I quite liked it there because I suppose if nothing else I got to leave I didn't have to sleep there and the person that owned it was lovely and I got I kind of got to know some of his friends and you know when I was in junior school and then the home the children's home closed down and his the man that ran it adopted him and his sister and he so he went and lived with him and sort of and his dad ran an old people's or a residential home for elderly and so my friend lives there so he's kind of he was brought up with quite a lot of responsibility so he was very uh, mature I suppose really in some ways compared to me he's probably more mature then than I am now but he was lovely lovely person and he was my best friend uh, for many years right the way up through school until probably the fifth year so from the age of nine to fifteen really so it's that six years but Neil we used to he used to be my I think he was kind of my naughty friend not not in a bad, not in a just a bit naughty, you know. 
he's the one that I'd get drunk with and and he's the one I started he's probably one of the first friends I used to go drinking with when I left school and he was much more confident than I was he looked older he you know I still looked quite young and he was more confident more cocky more you know he's and he'd he'd go up to a into a bar or a pub and he'd just ask for a drink and he there was no part of him that gave off that he was underage so that was quite good we'd just go and have a drink and there was a time when he'd be on a moped and he worked on the docks and he used to, we used to hang around with each other when I was living at my dad's when I was about 17 or 16 no 17 and then he got a car so we used to drive around or he used to drive around with me in the passenger seat and uh so I kind of, I had my first experience of driving around in the car and not really being naughty, but just, you know, that first teenager freedom kind of thing with him. And, uh, yeah, that's quite good, actually. And then in 1990. Yeah, 1990, I was, I think it was 91, I'd moved to London to pursue a stand-up comedy career, that went well, and uh, I visited, I came home, you know, I come to visit, and I went and saw him. And he said, he asked me if I'd go travelling with him. Because he was leaving, he was going to go to France and just travel around. And I'll be honest, I was tempted. I was tempted. But I didn't go. I kind of wish I had now, really because I could have just done that and gone back to London afterwards and it would have been a you know a great experience but he he went anyway without me and uh, I think he got together with a, either a German girl or a French girl and I did visit his parents five years later just to see how they were and so they updated me on how he was because he wasn't living he, he was still abroad I think um, but I can't remember what they said but I think it was just his mum there and she was funny and it's but she wouldn't even remember me now you know so this is like quite a long time ago but it's she was quite short but had a really really strong uh, Glasgow accent but she was funny really funny and uh, she uh, didn't hold back <laughs> I don't think his uh, I don't think his dad ever really liked me but I think she she thought I was alright but they were quite cool because when I moved in because I was I didn't have anywhere to live when I was 15 so I moved into I was yeah when I was 16 I moved into this flat above the shop that I lived, the chip shop, 
and Neil's mum and dad came and sort of gave me stuff like cutlery and uh, kettle and they really sort of tried to help me out which was really lovely I'll be honest I didn't probably appreciate it at, at the time um, I do now but I, I don't know I think it was so like uh, caught up in being 16 which is quite a while ago so that's it I think that was boring enough that was boring that was boring come on proper proper boring so I hope that the app for this sleep hypnosis week no the deep sleep whisper hypnosis will be up and running and uh the good thing, I suppose, stats-wise, the it's increased quite a lot because there's these different ceilings that I kind of had to break through. Uh, the first one was the the thousand a day, and that that took a little while to get through that, so I was kind of stuck below. And even then, it was all right because it'd be sort of six, seven, eight, six hundred a day, five hundred, four hundred, six hundred, and that's still really good going. And then I hit the thousand mark, and eventually, I never went under the thousand. So it's a thousand one hundred, thousand and two, thousand three hundred, and it you know it's it fluctuate. But I never went under the thousand. And now I've got to the point where I never go, I never go under 2,000. It's always above 2,000 downloads a day. Sometimes it's top end. It's top heavy. You know, it's like three, 2,900. I like it when it's top heavy because it just... I want it to hit the 300, the 3,000. I want it to get higher than that I'm, I've had over 10,000 in a day downloads but that was only a couple of times but it's it's nice to see it growing and that consistency consistency Consist to be consistent but then consistency isn't that like the texture of something like if you like let's say dough you've got two two orbs of dough and you're kind of massaging them both and you're you're kneading that kneading that's it you're kneading them I do need them and you can feel the texture but you can feel the consistency 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 yeah so d d whether it's firm wobbly um, you know the dough whatever however the dough is because I used to be a baker I used to be a master baker when I was younger and uh, I uh, used to make bread I actually worked in two bakeries one was a small bakery when I was a kid I worked in a bakehouse in a restaurant and I used to work at the weekends there probably the best job I ever had actually one of them and better than a paper round free cakes well they're free if no one sees you eat them and the other thing is I worked in a huge bakery when I was in my early 20s. Like I'm talking massive, you know, thousands of people working there, huge 24-hour operation. So there was less hands-on as far as making, 
you know, because everything was being done by machine. Uh, as far as the yeah, I suppose the dough, the dough part. You don't even got people there like kneading, kneading the dough with their hands and just holding it. And you know, like I always used to like it when I when I worked in the bakehouse. I was in my teens, early teens, and I just like I just always liked the texture of dough, like making bread. I liked especially the making rolls and just to move it around and just squeeze it and just yeah I always liked that because I used to be able to do two at, two at a time because you used to like spin them around so they were like the right size and then you put them onto the tray and I used to be able to do two at a time yeah anyway I'm going to go Thank you for listening. Thank you very, very, very much. So much. Ever so much. And I will speak to you again next time.